Thanks very much. Can you hear me? Does that work reasonably? Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for organising this day, which has been a great success. So let's give him a round of applause straight away. Uh, thank you to, to Birders Against Wildlife Crime for organising a whole range of Hen Harrier Days over several years, keeping the light shining. Thank you to all of you for coming. Those of you who have, who have been to many Hen Harrier Days in the past, thank you for sticking with it. Uh, thank you to those of you who've come for the first time today. That shows we're reaching out to more and more people. You're all welcome. And thank you to the rain for staying away for once. So uh, yesterday uh, I was at Rain and Marshes, at Hen Harrier Day event there. Uh, it was very sunny there. <laughs> Too hot. You've got it just right here. Perfect. Uh, there was a great lineup of speakers. There was Ruth Tinge, who's here today. Uh, who else was that? There was Martin Harper, Conservation Director of the RSPB. Natalie Bennett from the Green Party. Natalie, over the last few years, has been turning up at Hen Harrier Day events all over the place in Sheffield. Uh, in the Peak District, in Boland, uh, Raynham. Uh, right now, she's at one in Stratford-on-Avon. Uh, I said at the time that we need more politicians like that. Now, for my sins, I'm a member of the Labour Party, and I sometimes despair at the fact that Labour are a bit quiet on this issue, on the environment in general, and I wish they would speak out. And when I see Natalie Bennett, I have to say, is probably never going to be elected as an MP. But I hope she would be, but chances are she won't be. When I see her speaking out, I just think, God, I wish there were some Labour people who would do the same. Because she is fantastic, and she puts herself around a lot, and we need more people like that. Um, and also yesterday at, at Raynham, we had Chris Packham. Chris, who had flown back from America the day before, who was clearly completely wiped out, which is why he's not here today. I think he's probably going to sleep for three days before he turns up at the bird fair on Friday. He actually hired a driver to drive him to Raynham because he was a bit afraid that if he drove himself, he'd fall asleep going around the M25. Uh, but Chris was fantastic. It was great to have him there. Uh, and we, we actually had a surprise attendee, um, Barry Gardner, who is a Labour MP, a Shadow Secretary of State for International Trade and Climate Change, who did come to one of those first 10 Harrier days at the Derwent Dam four years ago. Barry turned up and that interested me because politicians do not give up their weekends in the parliamentary recess to turn up to things that either they don't care about or aren't important. And I think that was a good sign that events like this, people like you turning up, are still getting the attention of politicians. We need to grab their attention even more, but we are getting through. So we clearly haven't won yet, but we will win. We haven't won yet because hen harriers are still being killed and driven grouse shooting is still going on in an unsustainable manner. But things have changed over the last four years. We haven't come to the end of this journey, but we've made a lot of good steps along the way. If you look in the papers, I haven't seen the Sunday papers, but there will be stuff in the papers and on the media, I guess, tomorrow, because that's when grouse shooting will actually start this year, on the Monday. Nobody can talk about grouse shooting in the way that they did five, ten years ago, as it being this quaint, traditional British sport uh, that is lovely and produces lots of money for rural communities. Well, the media have to... <laughs> Absolutely. The media have to talk about this as being a controversial thing, uh, which is underpinned by wildlife crime. And with all respect to James and the RSPB and their position on licensing, I would support licensing, uh, but it isn't going to work. And the reason that we want to have licensing 
is so that we can have licensing and it doesn't solve the problem. And when it hasn't solved the problem, everybody is going to have to realise that you cannot have intensive drow shooting unless you're killing lots of birds of prey because hen harriers and peregrines, I'm afraid, eat grouse. So there is a real conflict here. Read my book, but <laughs> listen to my words. There is a real conflict here. You can't say, oh, well, they just ought to put up with them. They ought to have loads of hen harriers and peregrines and just love it. There is a real conflict. You have to choose. Are you going to protect and wildlife, which in theory has been protected since 1954, if you're going to do that, you're not going to get much driven grey shooting. <laughs> and let's move to that as quickly as possible. And the grey shooters realise that. That's why they're doing all this nonsense. You forgot the birds trying to smear the RSPB, attacking Chris Packham. I get a little bit of it too, but, you know... They will regard all of you as eco-zealots and um, anarchists and extremists. Well, you're flattering yourselves, I think, actually. <laughs> Some of us might, in our dreams, like to be seen as that. But looking at you, you look like pretty much normal, reasonable British people who think that the law ought to be upheld and that people ought not to be able to break the law just because they're rich and powerful and want to shoot a load of birds for fun. So the end of this story is that driven grey shooting ends. There are many steps on the way, and I will support any of the things that are steps on the way, but the inevitable end of the story is that driven grey shooting will end. But probably not tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing, uh, Chris is always inspirational. He's a funny bloke, but... He is always inspirational. And there's something he said yesterday at, at Raynham, uh, which is absolutely true, and it sums some things up for me, that he said that this whole campaign for the hen harrier and against the excesses of driven grey shooting is community forming. I thought that was a great way of putting it. As I look around you lot, I've seen quite a lot of you at these events before and uh, I wouldn't have met lots of you if it weren't for this and there is a bond between lots of us we all think not exactly the same but much the same on these issues and we will work together and we don't need an organization or to follow the lead of anybody else we are actually leading and it is community for me I always go away from these events thinking Oh, that was amazing. All those nice people and those people I met who I haven't seen since last year or the year before. We are a force and we're a force for good and we're a force for nature. So let's keep at it and stick together. Uh, I just want to say that Hen Harrier Days are bound to continue. We're not going to let them uh, stop until we do get to the end and we win. So next year the plan is that there will be at least one Hen Harrier Day and it will be back at the Derwent Dam in the Peak District and it will be on the Sunday before the inglorious 12th. And that will be a five-year reunion, but you didn't have to be there the first time to come. We plan to, for it to be a big event and with any luck... It'll chuck it down with rain. <laughs> and we'll be able to relive those moments. Um, for all of you who might be at the bird fair at the weekend, see you then as well. But thank you for coming to this, and thank you for staying together, and thank you for being part of that community. And we will win. We're bound to win. You can't defend a hobby of shooting birds for fun that destroys the environment and depends on wildlife crime for much longer. Thank you very much.